chapter 12. If you remember yesterday, Dickon had brought the animals to see Colin, so this is what happens next. The most absorbing thing was the preparation to be made before Colin could be transported with sufficient secrecy to the garden. No one, was, no one must ever suspect that they had a secret, and they had long talks about their route. Rumours of the new and curious things which were occurring in the invalid's apartment had of course filtered through to the servants' hall. But notwithstanding this, Mr Roach was startled when he received orders that he must report himself in the apartment no outsider had ever seen. Things are changing in this house, Mr Roach, said Mrs Medlock as she led him up the back stairs. Here is Mrs Roach, Master Colin, said Mr. Mrs Medlock. Oh, you are Roach, are you? Colin said. I sent for you to give you some very important orders. I'm going out in my chair this afternoon, said Colin. If the fresh air agrees with me, I may go out every day. When I go, none of the gardeners are to be anywhere near the long walk by the garden walls. No one is to be there. Very good, sir, replied Mr Roach. Dickon went back to the garden and there he stayed with Colin. A little later, the nurse made Colin ready. She noticed that instead of lying like a log while his clothes were put on, he sat up and made some efforts to help himself. The strongest footman in the house carried Colin downstairs and put him in his wheeled chair. Dickon began to push the chair and Colin leaned back and lifted his face to the sky. At last they turned into the long walk by the ivied wall. That is it, breathed Mary. Is it, cried Colin, but I can see nothing. There is no door. That's what I thought. And she took hold of the hanging green curtain. Colin dropped back against his cushions and covered his eyes with his hands and held them there until they were inside and the chair stopped and the door was closed. Not till then did he, de did he take his hands away and look around and round and round. I shall get well, I shall get well, Colin cried out. Mary, Dickon, I shall get well, and I shall live forever and ever. Mary and Dickon worked a little here and there. They brought him things to look at, buds which were opening, buds that were still tight closed, bits of twigs whose leaves were showing just showing green, the feather of a woodpecker which had dropped on the grass the empty shell of some bird, the early hatched. The afternoon was dragging towards its mellow hour. The bees were going home, the birds were flying past left often, and Colin was laying against his cushions. I don't want this afternoon to go, he said, but I shall come back tomorrow and the day after and the day after. That thou will, said Dickon. Us have thee walk around here and digging same as other folk for long. Colin flushed. Walk, he said. Dig? Shall I? For sure that will, thou's got legs of thine own, same as other folk. Nothing really ails them, Colin answered, but they shake so that I'm afraid to try to stand on them. What thou stops being afraid, thou's to stand on them, and that'll stop being afraid in a bit. I shall, said Colin. Who is that man? Dick and Mary scrambled to their feet. Okay, we'll find out who the man is tomorrow.